In the 70s, ships became larger and crews smaller. It was not considered economical to employ professional radio officers anymore, and monitoring radio communications became the responsibility of deck officers. Unfortunately, some distress calls from ships in need of help were missed. The International Maritime Organization, the United Nations agency concerned with shipping, felt compelled to act. The result was the GMDSS, which, since 1999, legally requires all vessels over 300 gross tons, or that carry more than 13 passengers, to carry specific equipment. The system aims to make best use of all types of communication technology, including radio, satellite and digital. It was decided that all compulsory fit vessels should carry at least two methods of sending and receiving distress messages. The equipment carried depends on the area in which the ship operates. The GMDSS divides the sea into four areas, defined by their proximity to shore-based or satellite receiving equipment. Area 1 is within range of VHF radio coast stations. Area 2 is within range of MF, medium frequency, radio coast stations. Area 3 is between 70 degrees north and 70 degrees south and covered by the Inmarsat satellite communication system. Area 4 covers the polar regions and therefore, for our purposes at least, is irrelevant. In addition to VHF, compulsory fit vessels are required to carry a number of other pieces of equipment. These include radar and waterproof handheld radios, EPIRBs, that's emergency position indicating radio beacons, and search and rescue transponders and navtechs. Some of these may be unfamiliar to small boat users, so let's take a look at them here. EPIRBs are portable, self-powered radio beacons that, once activated, send a signal to the COSPAS SARSAT satellite system. These polar orbiting satellites store the signal until they can send it down to an available Earth station, which, in turn, passes it on to a rescue coordination centre. The beacons transmit on 406 MHz. Many of the latest models have built-in GPS receivers. The information from the GPS is also transmitted to the satellites, giving a casualty's position to within 125 metres. Each EPIRB has a unique number, which should be registered. In the UK, this is done with HM Coast Guard at Falmouth. If an EPIRB is accidentally activated, don't turn it off until the Coast Guard has been informed. If the signal suddenly disappears, they will assume you have sunk. Search and Rescue Transponders, or SARTs, are homing devices designed to help rescuers locate vessels in distress. They are activated by radar waves and then show up on a radar screen like this. At first the casualty is located by a line of 12 dots along the bearing towards them. As the rescuer gets closer, the dots become increasingly bigger arcs until, when they are right next to the transponder, they become circles. With the SART at a height of 1 meter, they have a range of approximately 30 miles for aircraft and 5 miles for ship. Navtex is the part of the GMDSS that provides weather forecasts and navigational warnings. The information is received automatically and displayed in text form on a screen. Modern units operate on two frequencies, one for the local language and the other for English. They have a range of about 400 miles. The unit's menu system is used to select which coast stations are monitored and the types of information displayed. Each transmitting coast station is identified by a letter. They're listed in the Nautical Almanac. Whilst there is no legal necessity for pleasure yachts to carry any of this equipment, they will always carry some of it. For instance, a VHF radio and an EPIRB for coastal work, with the addition of a small Inmarsat for offshore passages, would be prudent. 